Yeah. Got it. All right, getting into round one here. We got Kev Jovain and we got Rich Joe versus Aaron and Static. I heard it was a bit of a team kill going on here in South Florida. But uh, right now we got the Ganondorf and the Pichu. I kind of like the combo because you have the two of them being able to only uh, zone break as well as Kev Jovain being able to close out the kills. Just running in and st just throwing it down here on to Static. Static in the middle trying to recover. Meanwhile, you go for the double team attempt on Aaron. Very smart call. And just dash attacking him away too. Static can't find his way back in. Meanwhile, Rich Joe continuing to push the pressure on the Aaron. Aaron almost getting hit by the F smash, but also getting killed. The static trying to get back to the stage. So far, blue team on a very good start. You see Kev Jovain trying to go for the drop down trade there. Gonna read the roll away, but Aaron is in the way, so he couldn't really go for an extra follow up. Meanwhile, Rich Joe trying to go for the Thunder off stage. Not out of range. Gonna get hard punished though by the forward smash. A static forcing. Kept Joan in away. Aaron actually not making an attempt to try and go ledge trap him. That's going to allow him to get back. That is not what you want to do with Ganondorf. Never give him a free opportunity to get back on stage. Take those edge guys when you can. Almost getting the back air. That's exactly what we talked about before. These kills are so strong. The extended hitbox through the shield is actually going to end up killing both of them. Kev Jovain is destroying everybody on stage. Meanwhile, Aaron and Kev both holding on to three stocks apiece. And just flying straight in with the up B. Being a little bit reckless, but he's going to make it back. All right, gets the PK Thunder too, and that's Rich Joe's stock right off the bat. It was such a good start, but he ended up losing so many so early. Goes for the fourth smash after the back though. It confirms the kill, but they ended up closing out on Kev as well. Aaron's still doing such a good job stock taking right now. All right, gets the follow-up dash attack, stopping any other additional fares right there. I like that. Trying to go for the air. Oh, and the down smash at the ledge is actually going to catch Rich Joe. And now all of a sudden, Kev Jovain looking at a 2v1 situation after they had a really good start. And that's going to be a down air, and that's going to be game number one. Very clean adjustments coming in from Red Team. Static was getting double teamed a whole lot, but Aaron barely took any damage. It was not a whole lot of times where he actually had stressful situations there. Kev Jovain and Rich Joe definitely need to close it up a little bit. I like the way that Kev was playing. Kev was very solid, and Rich Joe was closing the gap a lot, but there's a lot of times he took a lot of trades, a lot of uh, relatively unnecessary damage, and that's the last thing you want to do in that situation. But we're going into game two right here. I, I like the way that the two team comps are going, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how they make the adjustments here. After game number one there, that was a... Uh, I don't think the small stage is going to be good for them to stay on after the way that they had so many trades that happened between the two of them. You want to try and back each other off, make it so you can confirm those kills. I think a slightly wider stage. Maybe FD? I believe that was FD that got picked. Yeah, just running it back to see this the same team comp. Kev Jovain is actually going to opt to go for the Lucina. I'm surprised because he's the one who actually had the best overall play between the two of them with the Ganondorf. But I think with the fact they're going for a slightly wider stage, they just want to have the single hit trades. It is FD, and we're on the Omega version of Mario as well. Go for it. I'll be in center stage. Don't do that. All right, continuing the pressure static for Reen Rich Joe. And I think the big key here is the double team Aaron as much as possible after how well he held so many stocks. But Aaron just consistently making it by, not having to worry about too much. 59%. Kev Jovain looking at 76, being buried in the corner. Meanwhile, Rich Joe putting on a quick bread and butter, almost getting the up smash after Static would have uh, air dodged in, but he's going to get spiked, and that's going to be the first point on the board. And getting the confirm off the back throw as well. Very clean follow-up there from Kev Jovain. Static trying to break all that up right now. Fresh stocks apiece, but green team's going to first lose their first stock. Rich Joe going down. Kev Jovain. Going for a dare off the side there. I'm not sure why, but he walks away unscathed. And meanwhile, Aaron getting the dare, but the good recovery from Pichu is going to allow him to make it back. Kev Jovain going to get by that down smash, but no hard punish there for landing with Dolphin Slash on the stage. Static still has his jump, so not too much to worry about there. Kev gets the fair again, but also hits his teammate at the same time. He needs to back off Aaron. Aaron has just kind of been a thorn in their side this whole time. Even after losing that first stock, still holding the stock very well. Good drag down fair, and that's going to be the stock coming in from Static. That was relatively low, too. Very good adjustments from Blue Team so far. Really liking this FD pick, removing uh, any platforms out of the way and allowing them just to kind of outplay their opponents. Red Team down three stocks to five, but still, they're going to get a free one right there. He's going to end up missing the ledge. And then they're going to close out that up smash too, bringing this game back to even. If Aaron can continue to just live the way he has been holding these stocks, they're in a pretty good spot. 
Uh, gets in there, but gets on the other way. Unfortunately, that's not where he wanted to go. It would have been nice if he was able to get that. Landing with the up B in center stage again. These rocket barrels are very strong. And Rich Joe not SDing there. That would have been huge. Landing with the down there immediately off stage. Getting aggressive. I like it. Kind of throwing Aaron off a little bit. Meanwhile, Static currently getting buried in the corner. Good. Magnet cancel there. Almost getting him with the PK Thunder too. That would have been huge because he could have taken a stock out. But on last stock. Recovering high, no hard punish from Kev Jovain. He couldn't get in on time, but Rich Joe was able to get the dash attack just to back him off. And gets the downer as well, and that's going to be the last stock coming in from Static. Aaron now look instead of what he had before with a nice large lead, now looking at a much larger deficit. One stock apiece. See if he can make it back. They are up one game right now. Going for the, going for the fair. Both of them kind of hate each other. The last thing you want to do is have miscommunication. Oh, gets a jab block, almost gets a forward smash on it as well. Both of them going for double coverage on this recovery. And he's just going to explode anyways, and we're going to game number three. Excellent changes came coming in there from the blue team. That was very important. Uh, oh, it's Rene. Oh, okay. I knew I knew that. I knew I knew the name. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not his actual tag. But... Uh, following up there, you see Static and um, St Static and Aaron just kind of sitting there talking about it for a second. Meanwhile, Radea and uh, Kev Jovain just looking relatively composed, not feeling too stressed about that situation after that second game. It's like, you know what? It's fine. We're going to make the adjustment. Like, we made the adjustments. Everything worked out well. Long time trying to figure out stage number three here, though, between them. Oh, we're going to go to Kalos. Okay, actually going to get a much wider stage, uh, some wall recoveries. I don't know how much I agree with this swap for Red Team because of the fact that they went to FD before without platforms and it worked out a little bit against them. But then again, possibly might not matter too much because uh, now they have a much larger space to work with. Maybe it'll be good for them being able to not worry about zone breaking too much. They can reset a lot more. Starting off right away though, Aaron oh, potentially going to die here right off the bat. And that was a... What, six seconds stock? And Rock Bell still flying around there, but it doesn't matter having to lose that stock that early. That is not what you want to do going into game number three this early here. Static, once again, getting double teamed over on the left-hand side and able to get by the first fair, but not by the bear. And Aaron cannot get to them to stop it. Finally breaking it up with the up tilt. Good spacing coming in from Kev over on the left. Just outplaying. And then... Medea going in and closing it out yet again. Very solid. And Punk Aaron's once again over on the right hand side, just trying to go close out the gap that was being uh, put, or the pressure that was being put on Super Static there. Kev Jovain currently in a relatively frightening situation, and Redea trying to go save him. But that's not going to matter because the back throw is going to close it out. Medea running off to the side, avoiding the edge guard and actually reversing it. Now, Aaron losing his stocks very fast. What was such a nice stock taking ability he had game one has kind of disappeared over these last few games. And I think a bit of the wider stage here, them not being able to close the gap and stop the pressure is really making a big difference. Not actually, they're just really throwing hands right now. Everybody's just scrapping in the middle of the stage. Up here, gonna finally get a kill on Rede at 69%. Feature being so light. That was huge. If the static can hold his stock here. Or, or you just force smash three times center stage. <laughs> if he runs into it, it works. He's a whole stock up. You can get those trades. Not many negative situations come out of that there. Forward smash is going to close out the stock on static. Now red team both looking at their last stocks of winter side life. Going for the forward task attempt right there. The dolphin slash out of the forward air attempt there too is really good. Getting the down air yet again on the recovery. It's just Radea's ability to edge guard has completely changed the momentum in this entire set. Closing out at least four to five stocks with those downers has been so important. And allowing Kev just to play single hits. There you go, getting a follow up on the downer. They're just walking to try and get the pressure. Are you going to take a hard punish right there? And that's going to be a 2 1 victory for Kevin Rade over Punk Aaron and Super Static. Very solid gameplay coming in from them on game one, but a couple of mistakes that happened along the way there, and it's, uh, it ended up costing them. But I did like the way that Kevin Rade also decided to go to the flat stage, extend the space, and that was much smarter for them to, uh, to be able to prevent them from being able to close the gap.